Hello everyone, today we have a problem involving functional equations and this is a problem from the USAMO, the United States of America Math Olympiad and this is one of my most favorite functional equations problem and if you love functional equations as well, we're sure to enjoy this. So yeah, let's get started. This is the problem number two from the USAMO conducted in 2018 and in this video we have, we're going to look at certain problem solving strategies in functional equations, how we are going to attempt this Functional equations are just a little bit more challenging than others. Uh, then we're going to look at certain book suggestions for functional equations. And then I'm going to give you a continuation of the problem, a slight extension that you can try yourself at home. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances and research projects for school and college students. All right, so let's get started. So we basically need to find all functions f so that it satisfies the given functional equations for all x, y, and z greater than zero. And it is given to us that x, y, z is one, right? And this is a functional equation. It may seem pretty hard to solve at first, but we can actually do certain things that will make our life probably a little bit easier, right? But the first observation that we can make is x, y, z is one, right? So if x, y, z is one, then we can write x as a by b, right? y as b by c and z as c by a. This is one of the uh, known tricks that we employ whenever product of three numbers is one, we can write them as this in the form of this basically. And now rewriting this given functional equation in the form of uh, a, b and c, we will get f of a plus c by b plus f of a plus b by c plus f of b plus c by a and all of this transforms to one right let me just change the colors okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to define a new function i'm going to i'm going to define f of t as g of 1 by t plus 1 and why am I doing that? Well, you'll see that in a moment because it actually helps us. It actually makes our life a little bit simpler. Now, converting this given functional equation in f into g, we will get g, g of um, a plus c divided by b plus 1 plus g of 1 by a plus b divided by c plus 1. And we also have g of 1 by b plus c divided by a plus 1. And this entire thing is equal to one. And now we'll actually see why I made that substitution because we get this beautiful result, g of a divided by a plus b plus c plus g of b divided by a plus b plus c plus g of c divided by a plus b plus c is equal to one, right? So you have this really nice result. And um, now, if a plus b plus c is equal to 1, in this scenario, in this scenario, g of a plus g of b plus g of c is equal to 1. And this is really nice because this is something that we can work with, you know, and this is obviously at a plus b plus c is equal to 1. Okay, now I'm going to define another function. I'm going to let h of x to be equal to g of x plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3, right? And you'll see in a moment why that may that actually makes uh, a little bit of sense right what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna substitute a is equal to x plus 1 by 3 b as y plus 1 by 3 and c as z plus 1 by 3 so what we'll basically get is we'll get g of x plus 1 by 3 plus g of y plus 1 by 3 plus g of z plus 1 by 3 is equal to 1 but you can really bring the 1 on the left hand side and write it something like this g of x plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 plus g of y plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 plus g of z plus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 is equal to 0, right? And just split 1 uh, into 3, 3 one thirds, basically. So this is nothing but h of x plus h of y plus h of z is equal to 0 at x plus y plus z is equal to 0. This really stems from the condition that um, a plus b plus c is equal to 1, right? And if a plus b plus c is equal to 1, that means x plus 1 by 3 plus y plus 1 by 3 plus z plus 1 by 3 is equal to 1. 
In other words, x plus y plus z is equal to zero. Now that's great because this is actually pretty simple functional equation to solve, right? And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use simple substitution. I'm gonna set x equals to y is equal to z is equal to zero. So we get three times h of zero is equal to zero. So therefore h of zero is equal to zero. Let me just label this equation number one. And that's a really neat result because now we can prove maybe certain you can prove certain things about the function. You can analyze the function. I'm going to set x as x. I'm going to set y as minus x. I'm going to set z as 0. So we'll see that h of x plus h of minus x is equal to 0. So therefore, h of x is an odd function. Right? So h of x is an odd function. What is an odd function? So odd function is any function that satisfies h of x equal to minus of h of minus x. And an even function is anything that satisfies h of x is equal to h of minus x. Classic example is sine x and cosine x. Sine is an odd function and cosine is an even function. All right, great. So now that we have this, I can set x equals to x, y equals to y, and z is equal to minus of x plus y. And let's just see what we get. So we'll get h of x plus h of y plus h of minus x plus y is equal to zero. And using the fact that h is an odd function, I can write that as minus of h of x plus y. I can take the minus outside is equal to zero. And h of x plus h of y is equal to h of x plus y. Voila. When have we seen that before? This is actually the famous Cauchy's functional equation. And the solution to this is h of x is equal to cx. Right? So now that we have found h of x, right, using this Cauchy's functional equation, the solution to that is... Um, very well known that it that it, h is a linear function, right? So h of x equals cx. Now because we have found h of x, we can resubstitute that, right? We can resubstitute that um, where we had defined this. We had resubstitute that over here to find g of x. And once we find g of x, we can resubstitute that over here to find f of x, right? So we have found h of x is equal to cx and we can just resubstitute that into g of x and then resubstitute that into f of x to actually find out the value of f of x in terms of this parameter, in terms of this constant c. Right, and I'll let you try that for yourself. So yeah, this is a really, this is a really interesting problem functional equation. It's probably a different approach rather than what we may have seen before. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Okay. Right, so uh, we have certain book suggestions for functional equations. We have functional equations by B.J. Venkatachala, which is a beautiful book. And we also have functional equations, how to solve them by Christopher G. Small. This is a slightly advanced book, but if you if you really like functional equations and want to gain an in-depth idea into it, then it's, then it's really brilliant. Okay. And uh, yeah, last but not the least, we have a slight continuation of the problem. So I found out that h of x is equal to cx. And what I want you to do is I want you to find f of x using the idea of free substitution, like I said, and then prove that the value of this constant c lies between one by minus one by two and one, right? So c is somewhere like this. It needs to satisfy this inequality, right? So we need to prove that c lies in this range, if that makes sense. And as always, if you make any progress on this question or if you're able to solve it, please let me know. Please let me know in the comment section below, and I'll definitely respond to it. Until then, I'll see you later in another video. Bye-bye. Chinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years is because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States, and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR, and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.